Hey Swarmers, it's so great to have you back in the hive. Are you one of our wonderful subscribers? No? Well, you can fix that with this little button right here. And if you are, thank you. It means the world to us. Another question for you. Are you a denim jeans wearer? If so, how many pairs do you have? Two or three? Well, if you answered seven, you'd be bang on average. Sounds crazy, right? But according to a report from the UK, the average woman owns seven pairs of jeans and the average man has six pairs to his name. And a report out of the US claims that the average American owns seven pairs of jeans. There are 1.25 billion pairs sold globally every year. 450 million of those just in the United States. A survey from a few years back revealed that nearly 61% of Americans say they wear jeans or denim shorts at least three times per week. But let's talk dollars. The market value for denim fabric was $21.8 billion in 2020. You know that year that most of the world just stayed at home? And Levi Strauss reported close to $4.5 billion in sales. It's not just our closets getting clogged with too much denim, it's the ocean too. But given that denim jeans are reported as the single most popular item in the wardrobe worldwide, we're hardly going to stop the supply and demand anytime soon. Now, if you are a denim aficionado, you are likely in possession of raw denim clothing. That is fabric which is not shrunk, washed, distressed, or in any other way cosmetically tampered with before you bought it. If you buy from any department store or high street label, all of those pre-wearing techniques will have been applied. The difference is in the fit and fade. Raw denim can be molded to your form and faded in very unique ways. But two things both types of denim fabric have in common is that they are dyed with indigo or black dye and they shed fibers, lots and lots of fibers. It has long been known that machine washing clothing causes microfibers to come loose, particularly from clothing made of polyesters and other synthetic fibers. And despite washing water going through many stages of water treatment and filtration, these fibers can still end up in our oceans. Every time you wash one polyester fleece, it can shed thousands of microfibers, which then travel through a treatment plant, but usually evade the filtration system, so end up in our rivers, lakes, and oceans. It was once thought that organic fibers like cotton would not shed as much, and even if they did, they wouldn't accumulate in the environment as they dissolve and disappear over time. Sadly, this has recently been disproven. A study by the University of Toronto has found microfibers of indigo denim in sediments from the Canadian Arctic Archipelago, the Laurentian Great Lakes and the shallow suburban lakes of southern Ontario. For perspective, the Canadian Arctic Archipelago is made of 94 major islands and thousands of minor ones. The vast majority of all of them are uninhabited. This study then is another demonstration of the reach of human pollution. The researchers found that in the sediments of those regions, microfibers made up 87 to 90% of all the anthropogenic particles. In the archipelago, there was an average of 1,930 microfibers per kilogram of dry sediment. Of that, 21 to 51% were anthropogenically modified cellulose, and 40 to 57% of those were indigo denim. So breaking that down, 12 to 23% of the total microfiber load came from denim items. In just these three geographies, that's a lot of denim which is hardly surprising given that one single pair of jeans could shed 56,000 microfibers per wash. So how often do you wash your jeans then? For the average person, not wearing the raw denim variety, it's every two wears. An important side note is that although denim was once dyed with natural indigo, this is no longer the case and synthetic dye or chemicals are now used. This is certainly another barb in the sting of the denim microfiber distribution. Wastewater treatment plants are trying to effectively capture microfibers, but as an important side note here, more than 80% of the world's wastewater is released into the environment without any treatment at all. And when wastewater treatment plants do catch fibers, they turn it into a ball of biosolids. Sometimes this is used as land fertilizer which means that the microfibers are given yet another chance to run free in our waterways. 
But if the wastewater treatment plants have less effective filters, the result could be mind-boggling. The researchers from the University of Toronto found that from two treatment plants who pumped their treated water into Lake Ontario, up to 1 billion indigo denim microfibers could be released per day into the lake. So although the group was unable to determine for sure whether the distribution of particles to the area was from oceanic or atmospheric movement, either way it's worrying, the clues from wastewater treatment plants, genes ownership and the statistics of overwashing seem to point to water. So what can you do to help ensure that your denim isn't damaging the planet? Firstly, own less of this fabric. We found it alarming that the average American owns seven pairs. Wash them less, which will help infinitely with point one. And wash with shorter cycles and on cold water, which is more energy efficient also. Ensure that you clean your washing machine lint trap and filter regularly. Use a liquid detergent rather than powder because the powder is abrasive on your fabrics, causing more shedding. Better yet, use soap nuts. Natural, not at all abrasive and fully biodegradable. Use a wash bag like Guppy Friend or a tool like the Cora Ball. Both will trap microfibers, allowing you to remove them by hand and then placing them in the trash. A study by the University of Plymouth found that the Guppy Friend reduced microfibers by 54% and the Cora Ball by about 31%. As a longer term investment, consider an external washing machine filter more expensive and trickier to install than throwing a ball into the drum, but definitely more effective. Up to 78% of microfibers were removed when one brand was studied by the University of Plymouth. Choose a front-loading washing machine when you can. They clean more effectively with less detergent while washing more gently, which causes, again, less microfiber shedding. And they're even more energy efficient. Fill the washing machine up, meaning less agitation and friction. And please, don't do an ocean wash of your jeans, which has largely been outed as a gimmick now anyway, and seems like a crazy fast way to get your denim microfibers straight into the mouths of fish. So let's just not do that. Well, that's it for now, Swarmers. We hope that you've learned some new tips for laundry day, which will help you save water, energy, and our oceans from microfibers. Really appreciate your company as always, and look forward to seeing you next time. Stay healthy, stay safe, and stay sustainable.